You're listening to Rod and Style Radio, the latest podcast brought to you by RodandStyle.com, which is where you can find links for merch, videos from our YouTube channel, along with stories and tech talk from some of the greatest folks in the culture. So grab the wheel, it's about to get wild. You've tuned in to Rod and Style. Welcome to another episode of Rod and Style Radio with Hi. the Custom Couple. <laughs> of course, we've had a wonderfully long hot weekend. <laughs> and it ended perfectly with us uh, having a Tuesday off that our friend Ollie just happened to be driving into San Antonio for no reason at all but to see us. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome, Ollie, to the show. Thank you. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about what got you into the United States for the, in the first place, because as folks are going to start listening to your story, they're going to feel like maybe he's not from here. So. Yeah, I'm not from here. So I'm from the Black Forest in Germany. And actually, I have family. I have a cousin in San Diego. I have an uncle in Miami. I have another cousin. She's living in Virginia. So family, that brought me as a teenager and before, even before, yeah, uh, to the United States. Mm -hmm. And now I travel a lot to the United States by by business Mm -hmm. uh, because I work in the research and development of the Mercedes cars and we have proving grounds in the United States and I do testing there for the prototypes. That is so cool. That, you know... What is it? What did we come up with? It was 12 years ago that that we met for the first time? Uh, easily. I think it, a little bit more. Maybe, maybe, more maybe 15 that. because 12 years ago we switched from the Laredo, Texas Proving Ground to the uh, Phoenix Proving Ground. Mm-hmm. So it's around 12 years ago that we saw each other the, the last time. That's right. Yeah, it has been quite a bit. But since seeing you from the last time, you know, the world has changed. Uh, you know, we've, you know, kept in touch over Facebook and, you know, you started following us with the, with the podcast and everything that we're doing now. And, you know, I've been telling you, you need to get back to the United States. You need to get back (laughs) over here. We need to hang out. And, you know, when the world shut down, you know, I was getting messages from you. It was like, yeah, Germany shut down. I can't go anywhere. Like the borders are shut. So, you know, so I'm glad that that's over. And you were able to make another trip. So now you're, you came over this trip to Phoenix, Arizona. Exactly. Two weeks working uh, straight in Phoenix. And then I was driving down to El Paso to see another friend. Mm -hmm. She's from San Antonio original, also a friend of you. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) A sponsor of our show back in, uh, in last year, she was a sponsor of our show. Buena Buena Art. Art. Yeah. Right. So Caroline and uh, exactly. Jesus. Yes. So I stayed uh, the last two nights at their place and they showed me El Paso and we went to Mexico for, <laughs> for a cool trip. Just, you, just, you just get wilder by the minute. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And today I drove down to see you and we had a wonderful time with also my other friends. I have some friends left from here. There are also your friends like A.B. and Patty, mm-hmm. green people who started everything in San Antonio with me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so folks, we've been in Kentucky for the whole weekend and we drove last night or yesterday, all day yesterday. Sama drove. I was going to say, excuse me, I drove. We drove. I drove. Okay. Sama drove <laughs> for 11 hours. And I drove for the last five hours. Ooh. So we drove. <laughs> <laughs> but we wanted to make sure we were here on time to make sure the house was ready so that we can hang out with you because we were excited. I finally got to meet you. Yeah. Um, and for everybody who doesn't know, why don't we talk about a little bit about your 60 Buick that you have? Right. So how long have you had it? Well, I think it was 1998 mm-hmm. that I bought it. And yeah, 
did a little bit of work here and there, tried to keep it original as much as possible, but like little modifications uh, and to make it actually, it never breaks down, it runs and that's the most important thing for me. Absolutely. So it's got to be incredibly hard to maintain something like that in Germany. It's an American made car and, and, and even in America, they're hard to find parts for and hard to, so having this car since 98, like what, what all have you had to do to it to keep it running? Well, the first thing was a horrible uh, exhaust. So I decided <laughs> I cut the whole thing out. And so I was work, looking at the guys at Mercedes, how they do it and get all the information to make it, do it once, do it right. Oh, yeah. Um, so I made a stainless steel with the brethel tube and all that. Um, yeah, I took the knowledge meant of the exhaust people at my work. So they told me what I have to pay, pay attention to. So I did the exhaust and yeah, brake I changed from the one circuit brake to the two circuit brake because in the Black Forest it's a lot of mountains and it's a kind of security thing. Yeah. Because it's pretty heavy, my view again. If you go down, you want to have good brakes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, originally, for the folks that are listening in, originally on these cars, the master cylinder has one line coming out of you know out of it, to, and that distributes out to all four brakes. So yeah, the the upgrade is to you know typically you want to have two lines one going to the front and oh, then one one, the one headed to the back so yeah that i would imagine if you're near the black forest and you're going up and down hills and stuff like that you don't want you know shoddy brakes you don't yeah you know. so what uh what did you have to change out for that to work what, was it a kid or is it a, a different car that that, that it's a different from? car it's oh, a okay. The brake booster, it's uh, from a 67 Pontiac, I think. So a guy in, in Arizona, he has the same car as me. And I saw that two circuit brake kit and I asked him, how did you do it? And he said, it's just a plug and play by that uh, Pontiac, mm -hmm. uh, two circuit brake cylinder and just put it in. So little stuff like the little brake lines you have to do, of course, handmade by yourself. But sure but the rest was all perfect fitting. So it's pretty easy to do it. Wow, that's so rad. Now, uh, while we were in Kentucky, mm -hmm. we met uh, Dave. I think it was Dave, right? Uh, Webster. D D David Webster, yeah. Yeah, and he was like, hey, I, I know Ali, and he knows you from all the, the, the pages for the Buicks and stuff on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. So it's such a small <laughs> world, but it's really cool that you can you can get in touch with folks all over the world yeah. that have these cars and be able to, you know, exchange ideas right. and find things that work and, you know, like, Hey, I've got this that's broken. How do you, how do you work on that? You know? So that's really cool. We, we ended up meeting somebody that, that knew you. All right. So, you know, so you've had the car since 98, you know, have, have you owned any other, you know, old American cars since then, or is, has the Buick always well, been? Well, I, I had a Dodge pickup truck, a V, uh, 200. Mm -hmm. old US Army pickup truck that was before that I when I was 16 I was at my uncle in Miami and I I made the American driver's license so my first car in my whole life was an Oldsmobile oh, okay yeah but uh, like uh, those uh, 80s early 80s mm -hmm. uh, Oldsmobile Cutlass I think it was called yeah but that was my first car Beside of that, uh, I have a Lincoln Mark LT. As, okay. Yeah, for transportation of dirt bikes and all all that stuff. So that's it basically. Yeah. 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 So, what kind of uh, you know, like I always like to know what you know how American cars and American culture go in other places. So mm -hmm. in Germany, like where do you where do you take your car to, to you know to show it off or do you have car shows and things like that over there? Yeah, we have car shows. So I'm uh, I'm not often going to car shows. Um it's all mostly is with newer cars, new Corvettes, Mustangs, all mm -hmm. that. So that's not so much my thing. Yeah, I agree. I, I like the more the, the old old style and um i remember us talking earlier you were telling us that you take your daughter to the drive-in over yeah. there 
drive-in the theater. Mm -hmm. Exactly, we have a drive-in theater, and it's of course nice to go with an old car. And sometimes they had classic movies. There was other people also showing up with old Buicks, Oldsmobile, wow. Cadillacs. So sometimes I'm the only one with the old car, but <laughs> yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I am the one who sits in the car, so <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I, we, I enjoy it. I rem I remember we've had conversations like that. It was like you know, if you don't like what I'm driving, well, what are you driving? Exactly. You know, what did yeah. you bring? Yeah, here? we're just still talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we enjoy being in old cars. You know, we were in the wonderful heat of Texas today in the Buick, and <laughs> right. we had a minor overheating issue, but we fixed it. Oh, and thank you, Abe. Yes, thank you, Abe. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where, you know, we've had many guests come, like we've had Ken from Bad Ideas and it comes down to, Hey, do you want to go in the, in the Buick or do you want to go in a daily? We'll all sweat in the Buick. Of course. The Buick <laughs> was the choice. Yeah. Your, your 59 is a really cool car. Thank I, I, I enjoyed it. Thank the right. Thanks for the right. Yeah. Course. So I think that's going to start becoming the, the normal thing is so if, if you want to be on the podcast, you, you have to, to come to San Antonio for one. That That's the first box you have to check. <laughs> and then we'll take you out in the Buick and, and we'll eat dinner somewhere. And then you come back and record. That's how this whole podcast will go on. From you get, in, you, get from an, on. you get an invitation to sit in the front seat of my Buick. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I am not that that proud that, you know, I, I won't tell people that they have to sit in the back seat. Ken chose to sit in the back seat. He didn't have to. He wanted pictures. <laughs> but I told Ollie today, I was like, sit in the front seat. Enjoy it. Like, you know, the, this is what, what we want, you know, to show you and, mm -hmm. and want you to be a part of. So yeah, I was enjoying it. Definitely. Yeah. It was good. And then so we go over to, to Abe and Patty's house. And Amazing house. Right. I mean, that thing was beautiful. Really amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he's not even not even done with it. I know. And it's so cool, like what he's to see, like the progress that he's already made and, and the things that she's already done. You know, that, that house is beautiful. But your car parked in front of that house. I think that was the, the icing. This is, this is what everybody has to check out when this episode airs. We will post that picture of all of us posed in front of their house with the Buick so everybody can see it. Um, but yeah, it looked really good. It, yeah, house. it absolutely did. <laughs> yeah. And as y'all have heard on other episodes, our GoPro wants to be a jerk today. Yeah. And it's fine. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, man. this is That's been a running gag for the last couple of episodes, too. I feel like they need to make one that lasts longer. I don't I don't know what to tell them. I don't know what it is. I think it's a setting. Uh, I'm not sure because we can't change any of the settings on it. But it's like, uh, you know, we turn it on and we have the video going, right? And we, we get into a conversation and then the thing wants to just turn off. But it's not that the battery's dead. It just decides that it needs to go to sleep. <laughs> Maybe we need to stop doing podcasts in the middle of the night. Maybe it's just tired. Maybe it's just tired. <laughs> like us from like the long us. driving. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. All three sleepy. So... <laughs> So, Ali, you you came into the States. Uh, you're in Phoenix. You you drove to El Paso to hang out with Rippy. And then... El Paso to us. El Paso to us is nine, nine hours? Nine yep. hours. And, yeah, if y'all if y'all have ever been to Texas, that that's a trip. So, Ali <laughs> drove what I drove yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and then yeah. he's going to do it again tomorrow. Yes. So. Yeah. Tomorrow back to Rippy, to El Paso. Well, That's I want to say, you know, right off the bat, thank you. Yeah, we, we appreciate mm -hmm. you coming out and hanging out with us today. And, you know, and, and uh, shout out to Abe and Patty for being uh, hospi hospitable. There you go. Is that a good word? Yes. All right. <laughs> Bingo. Um, no, yeah. yeah, for me, it's also very special. I was like, yeah, with you guys in contact and it got closer and closer. And finally, I sit in the car and then there comes San Antonio and I check where do they live. I pull up at the street. Yeah. I saw you at the gas station before. <laughs> you did not see me, but I was like, oh, 59 <laughs> Buick. Okay, that must be her. So, and yeah, no, wonderful evening. Definitely. I was appreciate Was I putting uh, gas or was I putting air? No, you were uh, all... In ready to take off. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. really? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know. 
<laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, it's 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 for me wonderful to be back in San Antonio because I always liked it, and since they switched the proving ground, I never was here since around twelve years. I know it has been a long time. Uh, so yeah. you know we're we're glad that you're able to make it back in and mm-hmm. come and see us and yeah. you know you know of course the house is always open to you you know anytime you want to make a trip here but you know being able to have a chance to get you on the podcast get get you on, that's you nice know, yeah talking, I, in I, I, I appreciate person, that because <laughs> i think the only other option we were going to have and we were going to do it eventually if if this was never able to happen you know we, we had talked about doing a, right. a facebook the, call and, right and get you on that way but i'm so glad that you're able to come and sit it's, down with it's us it's different <laughs> it is it is a little more personal right absolutely yeah but you know uh you know you're you're also you're not only into cars but you're also into in uh motorcycles and choppers right Late, lately motorcycles yeah was uh, yeah i'm i like that a lot uh lately so i work a lot on the harley davidson i got that sports store and yeah since I have it, I switch this part and that part. So you make it your own. Make it my own, definitely. Yeah. I bring always parts from America, who are like ninety percent illegal in Germany. <laughs> 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 so, but I, I I enjoy it. Yeah, it's it's definitely nice, and I take it to work every day when it's nice weather. So if the street is dry, mm. I don't care about it. if it's cold, but. Yeah, no front fender and stuff like that. You need mm-hmm. a dry street. <laughs> oh, I would imagine. So I I enjoy that bike, and I'm thinking of uh, getting another one as well, older one. And yeah, that's that's right now the thinking. But of course, the Buick is the main the of main course. thing. <laughs> of course. Do you, do you have other folks that you ride uh, motorcycles with there? Yeah. in Germany, y'all I, go out. Well, I have a real good friend next village uh, who owns a little motorcycle shop and okay. he has a Galaxy 500 and oh. he has a whole bunch of motorcycles, all old Harley Davidsons, and he's pretty good uh, fixing them and building them. So I enjoy with him driving around. Yeah. So he sh- he is basically the only one with the same taste like me, like That's mu- music, close by. music like, car like, the whole style, you know. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking earlier about, uh, you know, going long distances to car shows and things, you know, trying to, you know, get your car out to places, uh, you know, that are not so close. And you were talking about in uh, in Germany, uh, you don't have it anymore, but y'all used to have a, a train that right. you could put your car yeah. onto the train and then you ride, you know, as a passenger on are the train. Saying- yeah, right. tell tell us a little bit about that. That was that was really cool to, to hear. Yeah, that was in the past, but they they quit it. I don't know why. But uh, if you want to go long distance, like let's say from Stuttgart to Hamburg, it's all on the freeway, and it's pretty boring. And uh, you don't need to put all those kilometers or mileage on your engine and the whole car just on the freeway. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a good idea to put it on the train and then you unload it uh, in, in in Hamburg, for example, and you go to the show the last, let's say, 100, 200 kilometers. Right. And But they don't offer that anymore. I wonder why they got rid of that. That, that sounds like it's such a... I would be taking advantage of that every <laughs> time I could. I'd be like, what? All you got to do is load it up. Fine. Load it up on the train. Yeah. Then we're going to go ride the train and... You know, yeah, that that sounds like I I would do that here. Mm-hmm. That's literally what I'm saying. Do you think Amtrak would do that for us? No. Load the Buick onto the, one of their cars. I don't no, know. They don't want to put that anchor on there. <laughs> the boat anchor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, the boat anchor. That, right. that would be a good one. I I think uh, I'm gonna reach out to Amtrak and <laughs> let them know that this is an idea. It's that gonna be a new a new do. business. No. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, Chuck, we, but we had that. I, I remember we had that for a long time, but they quitted it because I was asking. There was a show uh, up in Denmark, mm. and I thought, oh, okay, from Stuttgart to Hamburg, it's pretty boring to drive. Why don't I just do it like we used to do it on the train and. So the answer was from the German train company. Uh, we don't offer that anymore. Damn it. <laughs> We're going to look into this, folks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, I got to say, you know, we've been telling people uh, for the last 
you know, several uh, weeks that, you know, our friend is coming to town. He's going to be here. We, you know, we're going to have him on the show. And now <laughs> he's here. Huh? He's here in person. <laughs> you know, uh, we were going to sell tickets to the show. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you know, I have to say, you know, it, in keeping in touch, you know, thank you for, you know, having Facebook and being able to get on a messenger and doing that. But I think my favorite, we're always getting the voice messages from you because they're just so happy. I'm like, Oh, he's coming. It's finally happening. I was so excited the whole time. I would always tell him like, he messaged me. He says he's coming. He he picked a date. And so, yeah, but I, I I also have to mention that, uh, I have as a memory when we were meeting Matt, uh, Mm -hmm. you and me, like long time ago, like 12 years ago, the last time, I was at a show when you were with your bands uh, or with your band playing. Yeah. And it's one of the shows that's still in my head. So I was at many shows and I forgot many shows. I'm like, eh, was I here? Was I there? But this <laughs> show I, is definitely stuck in a positive way because it was a really crazy wild show. And oh, yeah, we, we did. It, get was, it was really good. And I know after the show, hanging out together and it was really good times back in those days. So yeah. I, I, I still remember that. Was it so, your reunion show? No, no, this was an original show. This was, yeah, this <laughs> was, was probably. He's had so many reunion shows, it's not even funny. No, no, no. This could have been 2008, maybe? Something. 2007, yeah, 2008. Around that, 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 that fits, yeah. That's when yeah, I was so, in Laredo, yeah. So, uh, for folks out there that have just tuned into uh, <laughs> Rod and Style Radio and have not heard <laughs> of us, my name is Lane, and uh, my wife. Sama joins us on this uh, episode. <laughs> she is uh, getting reminded of things that she was not allowed to go to because she was too young to be there. I'm 11 years <laughs> younger than you. Of course I couldn't go to these shows. When he talks about shows that he was in his 20s, I was like, oh, I don't play that game. She wasn't graduated yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, that, that was probably 2007, 2008, somewhere around that. Uh, and yeah, we would get wild. Uh, of course, you know, I have to say, you know, at that time, that was probably, uh, at least in our experience of, you know, being into cars and, you know, into the music and all of that, uh, that was probably the heyday the, uh, most recently of for San Antonio's scene, uh, car clubs were getting out and going to places, uh, the, uh, the spot you were talking about, the mix. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, they used to do Sunday nights. Uh, they had rockabilly bands, and uh, the front parking in front, you know, right at the door would be old cars. That, right. You know, yeah, everybody yeah, would yeah. park there. Exactly. And I, re- all, I remember that. Yeah. You know, there was, was, was there was a lot was of great, yeah, a lot of good times going on then, and it it's changed quite a bit. Like, be nice. Yeah, because <laughs> now it's like. I don't know. It's just not like that anymore, really. It's not. It's like we talked with Abe and Patty today. You know, it's a lot has changed so much that it's it's you kind of pick and choose the shows you want to go to because it's like, do I really want to go all the way down there? Because it and even at that, even when you go to the shows, it's not nearly as fun as they used to be. It, I feel like it's not as close as it used to be. Like hanging out with people, hanging out with friends. It was, I don't know. I just feel like it was fun more back then than it is now. Yeah, because all the stories that I tell Sama, she's like, "Why, why don't we do this now?" And I was like, "I don't know. It just stopped. Like it just yeah. like, like one day it just stopped." Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think it, it it has its possibilities. You know, everything comes back around. Everything happens for a reason. But you know, I think yeah, I think it could get better. But right now, it's just it's just not the same as it was back then. So when Ali comes into town and he's talking about, you know, <laughs> all of the, the folks that we used to hang out with and the places that we used to go. And I'm just sitting here going, man, I miss that, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how I remember the San Antonio and the mix and all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hanging out with the Lone Star Lords, with Scott, yeah. Scott and all those people, Raul, all the people I remember. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't seen Raul in quite a while. I follow him on on uh, all the social media, and I've talked with him a couple of times, but I haven't seen him in person in a say, long time. I was gonna say, I think it's been a year because it was probably what uh, show was that Independence Bash back last March. 
I think so. That's what I'm saying. I think I know it's been a year. I haven't. We haven't mm. seen Jenny and Scott and since about the a year, Descendants. Since the Descendants, so yeah. that one's been a while too. But yeah, yeah, we haven't really been seeing a lot of people out anymore. See, that's a that's the kind of funny part about our 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 music scene and our car scene now is like, uh, you know, we randomly run into people and right. then we talk to them, but it's like that never is there anything that we're all just going to go and mm. yeah. hang out together. Right. So like, we'll see one guy over here. We'll see a girl over there, but we never like have anything going on anymore. Other than that, that independence bash last year, that was the last thing that, that really anybody's like gotten together for. Yeah. Right. But yeah, it is what it is. San Antonio scene is just kind of wishy washy sometimes like that. But it'll come back. It always yeah. does. Something will something will happen to make it come back. You know, a, a band will come through town or something, and everybody will get together for it. I'm sure. So it is what it is. And if you're listening to this and you feel like you know how we do, uh, oh Lou, Lou is going to be on the podcast with us tonight. Thank you, Lou, uh, with your opinion. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, if you're listening to this, you're in the San Antonio scene or whatever, maybe, you know, we do need to all get together and figure that out. He'll be fine, you know. It, let him let him do his thing. <laughs> and there he so goes you let, again. <laughs> you, let him, you let him talk. He was like, okay, Dad, I'm going to do this now. But, yeah. <laughs> I would just go put him in ours. Um. So the scene out there in Germany. So our, as far as like rockabilly shows, he just wants to talk now. That's he's just gonna cut me off every ten seconds. He's getting more and more upset. What time is it? Is that twenty five fifty? Wait for him to move him. No. There you are, there you are. Over there. <laughs> So as far as, you know, like rockabilly scene out there in Germany, do y'all get a lot of shows out there? Is there like yeah, a big... It's coming back now uh, since that COVID shutdown. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's coming back. Good. So there is shows and it's it's getting better again. But some venues closed, of course, because yeah. of the COVID like worldwide. Mm-hmm. They didn't make it. But yeah, we have we have it coming back lately. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I know a couple of our venues closed down as well. Uh, one of our favorite ones that I don't know if it was open when you were here, uh, Amp Room, it was on the same strip as the Mint. No, I don't remember that. But that one got bought out and now it's like a completely different venue. Oh, yeah. And yeah. so now it's like, uh, we don't really have, you know, that rockabilly, psychobilly venue as much mm-hmm. as we used to. So right. I know it's kind of like trying to figure out like where we're going to go. Uh-huh. But I don't know. I think we're going to have to you know, get our passports and go visit you out in Germany. Absolutely. I think that'll be probably the most exciting because this man doesn't really get on airplanes at all, but I think we're going to have to try and make it work. Definitely, But yeah. you had one of our friends go out there, right, and visit you? Uh, that was a while ago, uh, Jason. Mm-hmm. He was visiting me a couple of times, so yeah. And I took him to Psycho Billy Festival, mm-hmm. and so we were in the Buick driving around. <laughs> I showed him the Black Forest a little bit. Nice. Stuttgart area, yeah. So, yeah, he was he was over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm back, folks. I had to deal with Lou a little bit. Told you. <laughs> that, folks, if you've heard any of our shows here at the house or our live feed, sometimes he'll get crazy and start barking on it, too. But, uh, yeah, he he's my old man. He just he just wants <laughs> to be in the show. Yeah, he's my, my old chocolate lab that I've had for bunch of years with the worst name in the world lou no his original name uh lugosi yes <laughs> yeah yeah i've had him since it since he was a puppy and uh yeah he's just getting older yeah and he kind of gets like he he can't hear so he gets like <laughs> like he he thinks he's the only one around and and like scares himself and starts barking yeah it's funny but <laughs> yeah he's just getting old so fun Fun facts about why we have extra noise on these podcasts. Sorry, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> Chuck understands he's got an old pup, too. Yes, Sam. Is his dog named Sam, really? Yeah, Sam or Sammy. I think it's Sammy. Everybody has their dog name after my name, and I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> 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 one, of, one of my friends. 
friends Hank, his dog's name is Sam. And then Chuck's, I think I'm like... Sammy. Nine, yeah, that I, sounds I, right. I think I'm 99% sure his, uh, her name is Sammy. I'm like, <laughs> great. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I remember we were almost going to stay with our friend Chuck. He, he's up in Fort Worth. We were almost going to stay with him. And uh, he's like, yeah, there's no problem. You can stay at the house. Just know that I have a German Shepherd. And I was like, oh, that's okay. He's like, no, I know it's okay. I'm, I'm just, just telling, telling you. <laughs> That I have a German <laughs> Shepherd. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't care what you're comfortable with. Yeah. I'm just letting you know that your a comfort dog level there. means nothing at this point. <laughs> so, thanks, Chuck. <laughs> when you were growing up, Ollie, what uh, like what bands were you into, and music wise, what what were you into? Well, um, funny, yeah. Last night there was the Exploited playing in El Paso. Wow. And that was basically one of my first shows I went to. Really? And that uh, formed me pretty much because I liked the show. It was the first time I was all impressed. But beside of that, well, I grew up like the Meteors whenever they were playing. Mm -hmm. I really liked them. I still like listen a lot to them. Mm -hmm. So German bands made sin. I always like to listen to that kind of stuff. So yeah. And then my in when I was in Orange County, all those bands, yeah, the U.S. Bombs I like. Oh and yeah. So the Dwayne Peters. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's a special character. <laughs> 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 but uh, beside of that, the music I like. Yeah, oh, of yeah, yeah. The acting is like oh well. <laughs> 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 but no, and um, like I have still friends. I just uh, was talking to my friend Mimo in Las Vegas. He lives now from Discontent, so I'm still in contact with those guys. Wow. Uh -huh. And when they did a German tour, they stayed at my house, of course. So That's when they were cool. playing in Stuttgart, so yeah, yeah, the Orange County music I, I like a lot. Well, I like. What should I say? I mean, I like when I let's think when I do something on my Buick. I listen to music, of course. It's also the Reverend Horton Heat. Mm -hmm. I like his music a lot. So that that kind of music is my my main my main music. That's so cool. What was uh What was your first concert as a kid? Like, what was the first band you saw live? We said that was the Exploited, or well, was there any others before then? Good question. Uh, first band, I think it was probably except the heavy metal band, the German. Oh German yeah, heavy metal band. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was right before, but that was the same time. So the, it was, I think, in the same month. So the first punk show was definitely Exploited, and yeah. Like I say, all new world, and I just was like, "Oh, that's that's the thing." I I like the music, and I like the people, and you know, it was the whole atmosphere was really cool. Yeah, you were talking with AB earlier, and I just I thought it was really interesting. Uh, we were talking music, and you actually got to go to the very last punk show at CBGB. Yeah. And that that's uh -huh. that's wild. So what was that like <laughs> being a, being a part of that kind of history? Well, that was uh, I was on also on a business trip and I extended it for a few days. I decided uh, to go down to New York. So and I was there and I was uh, uh, recently looking at a newspaper and there was uh, it was saying the last show is on this. I think it was a Friday. Uh, and then they closed down the CBGBs. And of course, I know the CBGBs from record uh, covers and everyone knows it. If you're in punk music, everyone knows it. Mm. So I was like, oh, they closed down. So I was looking up at the computer uh, to get a ticket. And ex accidentally, I was uh, seeing, okay, there is a ticket left, but I wanted to have two because with my friend where I stayed in, in Brooklyn, we wanted to go together, but there was just one left. So I hit the return button and I got that ticket. And then we read it the, the site and it was sold out. So I got the last ticket basically for the last show in the CBGBs. And so I went by myself then and yeah, to see it in real was really cool. And of course, a punk rock show, the Reagan Youth was playing there. Pretty wow. good, good American band. So it was a wild, wild show, and <laughs> just uh, yeah, I'm I'm glad I I I was there. 
<laughs> that's that is wild <laughs> folks if you tried to go to cbgb and get, and get you know uh into their last show uh just write in and let us know how upset you are with our friend ollie for buying the last, <laughs> for buying the last one <laughs> <laughs> We promise that he will not give a fuck. (laughs) (laughs) I think you're right. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Ali, I I am so glad that you're here. And it, you know, it's absolutely exciting for you, you know, for us to have you here. Is there any folks at home or any, any, any people out there that you would like to, you know, give some shout outs to and, and, you know, anybody that you would like to, you know, say hello to from the show here? Well, of course, like, I'm uh, going to say hello to my daughters, of course. Mm-hmm. Can I say, yeah, to my Harley Davidson friend, uh, Jörg. And... Yeah, to my brother, of course. He's he's the real punk rocker in the family. <laughs> so he's six years younger than me, but he's playing in bands. And so he lived in Seattle for 13 years. And so he's he's total. He's he's not a car guy like me. What I'm in cars, he is in the music. So mm-hmm. gonna say hello to him, of course. <laughs> and yeah, so that's that's the closest circle. I want to say hello absolutely man thank you for being on the show and again anytime you're coming through town we got to have you back absolutely I, I will be back and you always have a place to stay at my place of course okay so i already, so told, you're, them, you're, I already told them we're gonna go out there so just so you know you're that. definitely welcome at my place like, <laughs> so it, it, it's Chuck. cool it's cool in your house i i enjoy it it's it's really cool <laughs> thank you <laughs> chuck i'm gonna need a plane ticket to two, Germany. Two plane tickets. Okay, two. <laughs> two. I mean, I figured you would ride and I would just catch a ride in the suitcase. How about that? You we'll we'll fit. save we'll you save money that way. You won't fit. Will you fit? I mean, oh, if I'm you'll fit, fit, I'll then I'll take the ride and you can go in the suitcase. <laughs> But no, yeah, that would be excellent. Uh, it'd be just cool to just see a different side oh, of yeah. the world, you know, a yeah. different culture, different everything. Yeah, I think that'd be awesome. And we'd get a ride in his Buick. Yes, yeah, definitely. See, yeah, yeah, see, yeah. There you go. Yeah. So this episode goes out. Part two of this episode will be us in Germany. How about yes. that? <laughs> Bingo. I like this. I like this idea already. I hope Chuck likes it. You bet. Because he's 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 gonna have to go along with it. I'm sure. <laughs> That would be awesome. But yeah, absolutely. We would love to do that. So uh, thank you for being on the show. Folks, if you are listening to this on Apple, please go and leave a rating and a review because that helps us out quite a bit. And if you're listening to this on Spotify, you can do the same thing. Leave us a rating. And uh, you know what to do. You're listening to Rod and Style Radio with the custom couple. And in all things custom, keep it cool. And don't forget... Stay wild.